Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My intention with this channel is definitely not to become a EV charging channel, um, although that's kind of been what a lot of videos have been about recently. I also don't tend to do product reviews um, unless there's just not any reviews already on YouTube. And there are quite a few videos already on YouTube about this particular EV charger. But the reason I decided to make a review video on this charger is because uh, one, just as kind of a follow-up as the last few videos have been kind of why you shouldn't buy a particular charger and all the problems that I encountered with uh, with the last charger or two because this one has been just absolutely fantastic and also because most of the existing reviews really focus a lot more on installation and not really operation and I was most interested in seeing how the app worked on this um, on this particular charger before I purchased it and there's very little uh, very little examples about that um, so today we're going to do just kind of a quick review no installation uh, there's plenty of videos on that to see and just what I like and uh, why I think this may be one of the best value chargers um, on the market so hardware wise there's not really a lot to talk about here it's not very exciting looking it's not very fancy looking um, it's not ugly but it's not impressive looking but uh, where it lacks in looks it really makes up for in functionality um, so just a couple quick things um, one is this cable is great um, there's already been um, some some reviews and testing done on this cable so I won't get into that um, state of charge has a great a great video on this charger where they put this in a in a freezer and show how it's still flexible um, so this this cable is is great because it, it has the flexibility of the Ultium Ultium charger I used to have um, but it's not nearly as thick and heavy and clunky and then this handle is also great it's unlike any of any charging handle I've ever used before it's just got a great contour to it a great feel in the hand the quality is great and then of course this little dock um, it just automatically pivots up when you pull it out and nice click and just hangs hangs out like that so you know that's great that's been covered um, so we won't spend a lot of time on that um, I really like how the unit itself has this easily easily removable cover so that comes off there's a couple um, thumb screws or, or screws that you can put a coin in and turn and to get to all the electronics I'm not going to do that now because again this isn't really an installation video but it's just it's it's a great design overall So if you saw my last video, you know um, uh, I really like um, the charger to tell me what it's doing. Um, I like to know uh, at a glance what's going on. Uh, the Ultium charger had some had some notification lights in the front, but they were hard to remember what they were doing. This this one is, is super easy. Um, so if it's green, it's on. It's ready to go. It's not doing anything, but it's ready to go. Um, so you can see that kind of green glow around the charge port. Um, so let's uh, let's see what happens when we plug it in. So it's now blue, and once the car starts communicating, there it goes. It's pulsing. So when it's pulsing like this, that means it is delivering a charge to the vehicle. It's just that easy. It's easy to spot across the room. It's easy to know what's going on, and um, you know that's that's basically it. And I'll show you here in a minute, but when the charge is complete, it'll just change to a solid blue light. Um, so yes, it is perfectly capable of telling you when the charge is complete. Um, this one handles it a little differently than um, the Altium charger did. I believe the Altium charger, um, pretty much as soon as that draw from the car went down to nothing, it pretty much immediately went to a, a, a status light of, hey, I'm done, plugged in but not charging. Um, this one works a little bit more like I would have liked to see the Unify one work, um, or, or what I was suggesting is that, you know, after it's detected no power being delivered um, for a certain amount of time then it tells you the charge is complete. I would say if I have a complaint against the charger 
um, I would say I'd like to see that time frame tightened up a little bit. Um, it seems that it can be anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes um, before, between the time that the car actually notifies me it's done charging and the charger notifies me. Not a huge deal really, um, but it seems like they could tighten that up a little bit. Um, and basically the notification it gives you is more along lines of, hey, the car's pulling very little power, um, it's probably done charging or something along those lines. And then interestingly enough, because I know this was a topic of much discussion on the last video, the app does have a, a duration counter. So like the charger before this one, it does um, it does track the entire time the cord is plugged in. So if you plug this in at 5 p.m. and it finishes charging at 7, but you don't pl unplug it until 5 o'clock a.m. the next morning, then the stats on that particular charge will be 12 hours. So it, that is the way that works on this charger. I can see the argument both ways. Again, you know, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna have a little bit of a quibble, I would say. Uh, and this is nitpicking, but we need to have a toggle in there that says, hey, um, it, let's have it work this way or let's have it work that way. Um, let's have it work where when I detect the charge is probably complete to stop the timer or no, I want the timer to be the whole time it's plugged in. And again, a, a simple adjustment in the app for my other little complaint about the, the duration time. Um, maybe have the ability to, to dial that in a little bit and maybe if it doesn't detect any high draw of power for five minutes, um, you know, maybe maybe make that adjustable. Um, but speaking of the app, let's take a look at it because that's like the big thing that I wanted to see before I bought this. I wanted a smart charger, I wanted an app, I wanted data, and it was hard for me to find a lot of that information on this charger. Okay, so here we are in the ChargePoint app. Um, the cool thing about this app is it uses the same app that you do for their DC fast charger. So if you've already created an account and used their app to to charge at their DC fast chargers along interstates, then you've already got everything you need and you're already somewhat familiar with the way this app looks. Um, so when you uh, when you get this charger, um, you'll need to uh, add it to your account, add it to the app. Um, so it is tied to your account specifically. In fact, um, a little tip for you, um, I have uh, in passing noticed, uh, I have in passing read about how um, if you don't remove it from your account, then someone else can't add it to theirs. Uh, so this is presumably a theft deterrent, um, but just keep that in mind if you're gonna pick up one of these secondhand from eBay or somewhere to make sure that that seller is going to remove it from their account. Otherwise, you're gonna have a problem. Um, so here's, uh, here's the main tab uh, for, the, uh, for your home charger. Of course, you can see at the bottom where you have the other uh, tabs to, to go to the map to look for you know, DC fast chargers, that kind of thing, your account. But we'll, we'll focus, you've, you've probably seen that if you've charged at DC fast chargers, we're gonna focus on this uh, home charger. Um, so you can set a schedule. I don't because my power is the same price 24 seven and also the car has that ability built in so I don't really have a need for that and so we've got the remind me to plug in so I do have that set that's a nice feature to have um, although my car has that ability through OnStar um, and so I've already actually got that set up but the nice thing about this is the OnStar notifications tend to be inconsistent like sometimes they'll just stop working for a few days so this is a nice safety net um, so here's where we set our charge current limit. I've got a 60 amp breaker, so I've got it set at 48 amps. And we've got the settings, um, so you can name your charger. You've got, um, uh, you can choose which utility you have, which is really cool because then it will um, pull data from that utility for your address from that provider and it will uh, calculate your charging costs, which I think is a great feature and it's one of the big big reasons I chose this charger. In fact, that is definitely something that Unify should add to their charger um, in a future update. So we can see the software version and everything on the charger, um, set the LED brightness, reconfigure your Wi-Fi, all that kind of good stuff. There's the remove from account that you would want to do if you were selling it. All right, so that's the boring part. Let's talk about the exciting part. 
activity. Um, so this is really cool. Um, this uh, shows you up at the top about how much money you've spent for the month. So we've spent about $40 charging this car so far this month. And then you can see each charging session down here. So if we click on any of these, um, we get a really cool graph um, and it shows uh, the approximate cost and the energy delivered. Um, and again, you can kind of see how it does keep counting. You can see where I plugged it in when I got home that evening and then I unplugged it before I left for work. Um, so that's why it's kind of flatlined for a majority of it because it, it only took a couple hours to charge back up and, um, you know, and, and then it was just doing nothing for the rest of the time. So I do kind of wish you could, you could dial that in, but you know, that, that's my only, uh, my only complaint. So we can also click these uh, little buttons here to switch over to energy for the month and estimated distance. Now it uses that based on stats it knows about your car that you've uh, previously entered on your account. Um, so those are, you know, these are all estimates, but it's really kind of cool to, to be able to scroll through and kind of see some of these stats at a glance. Um, and then if we scroll back far enough, you can see these, these blue ones are our home charges. And then uh, we can look and see that these uh, orange ones back over the summer where we're on vacation, those are the DC fast chargers. So one little bug I've noticed in the app, and it's deciding to do it right now, is even though it shows it's charging, I can't actually see the current charge. Sometimes it does this. Like usually you can actually click on one of these for the one you're actually in the middle of and see see a graph so far and that kind of thing so i'm not sure why it but it'll eventually catch back up i'll try to check on it here in a minute maybe we can get some footage of it okay so now that the app has decided to show us the current charging session um so you know you can see there that's what it looks like when it's in progress got the little animation gives you some general stats about what has happened so far this doesn't happen often most of the time you know that does come up um, but i will say even when this the, you know the current activity feature is working as it should um you know it's not like super real time i'm guessing if this feature was just absolutely real time down to the second that would put a lot of strain on whatever servers that charge point is using so this kind of tends to update you know every few minutes or so uh, depending on when you look at it but you can see how much um it's pulled since its last update which was about in this case about six minutes ago so it's not, like I said, it's not absolute real time, but it does give you a general idea of what's going on. All right, so you can see what the charger does um, now that the battery is fully charged. Um, we've switched to a solid blue ring around the uh, charging holster. And then if we switch back over to the app here, uh, you can see it shows fully charged. Um, and uh, you can see the overview of, of that charge says complete and we do have a notification here um, I also got an email um, which those are all options for notifications um, sadly this is one of the many times when OnStar does not send me a text to let me know the car has finished charging so I can't tell you the exact um, delay between the charge point realizing it and the car um, but that's kind of what that looks like once it's uh, completed charging. And here's the uh, email notification that you get, kind of an overview of that charging session. Alrighty, that about does it for this quick video. Hope this helps somebody that's trying to decide what charger um, that they're going to get for their EV. Um, I can't recommend this one enough. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's really, really good. Um, for the for the now three different chargers I've had experience with, this this one is uh, is definitely my favorite so far. Um, I you know. Check out the one, uh, the video I just did on the Unify station if you haven't seen that yet. I think that one's really promising. And maybe if the software ever matures on that, that one could be um, could be a great option. Of course, it's quite a bit more expensive. Um, they do have a cheaper model available. So, you know, there again, if it, once their software matures, that could be a, a contender for sure. But until then, um, that's all for this video. And I hope you'll consider subscribing and checking out some of the other uh, content we have on this channel. Thanks for watching.